With the growing television market targeted towards kids in the late 80s and early 90s, there was a channel that wanted to do a little more in the way of educating rather than purely entertaining. And if you know about PBS, you'll probably be pretty familiar with the fact that this is a publicly funded channel that often receives sponsorships from brands like Juicy Juice, Chuck E. Cheese, Kellogg's, and many more, always ending its sponsorships with a special thank you to all of its viewers. And if you're like me, you grew up with many of the shows from this channel. And I'm here to take a trip with you through the timeline of PBS Kids. This is PBS. For 25 years, PBS had been airing children's shows on the normal channel. But due to a ready-to-learn initiative to help increase access to education for youth, they looked to start a new block on PBS dedicated just for kids. In August of 1993, PBS introduced the first mascots for PBS Kids, known as the Pea Pals. Purnell, Pete, Penny, Petunia, Peggy, Priscilla, Polly, Paula, Pat, Paganini, Pianissimo, Pierre, Perry, Paco, Pinky, Peebo, and the Pea Pet, who were all incorporated into the children's block called PTV on July 11th, 1994. Once PTV officially launched, the characters often hung out at a theme park called PTV Park, which would help introduce the shows coming up next. PTV was also known in different areas as Just For Kids or The Kids Zone. With this change, the channel also introduced new interstitials or the breaks between shows, such as Riddle of the Day, Another Pointer from Paula Poundstone, Check It Out, and of course, showing kids solving problems, playing games, and answering questions. What would I do if I could fly? I would take a trip around the world and go all the way up to space, and I won't go down. Most of the shows they aired during this block were already on the channel prior to 1993, such as Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and the show that most people associate with the channel, Sesame Street, which continues to air new episodes, which makes the first of the shows still on PBS Kids today. In 1972, there was a Spanish spin-off of the show called Plaza Sesimo, made up half of dubbed over material from Sesame Street and the other half being original material. After ending in 2018, the show was revived again in 2020 and still continues airing new episodes as of today. Other shows that were airing prior to 1994 were 321 Contact, Reading Rainbow, Newton's Apple, Square One Television, Kid Songs, Shining Time Station, which included Thomas the Tank Engine, Preschool Power, Get Real, Bill Nye the Science Guy, Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, Mark Whistler's Imagination Station, The Big Comfy Couch, Barney and Friends, Lamb Chops Play Along, Ghost Rider, Storytime, Tots TV, The Swamp Critters of Lost Lagoon, Katie and Orby, Pappy Land, Theodore Tugboat, The Adventures of Dudley the Dragon, and Groundling Marsh. The first original show to come out of the PBS Kids block was The Magic School Bus, after which came JJ, The Jet Plane, The Eddie Files, The Hugabug Club, The Puzzle Place, Whimsy's House, Wishbone, Bloopy's Buddies, Kratz Creatures, Adventures from the Book of Virtues, and The Reppies. Introducing an innovative, individual, intense, inventive, insatiable interstitial, it's the game! On October 7th, 1996, PBS had branched out to 95 stations across the U.S., using this to introduce a new brand of interstitials called The Game, aimed at school children, which aired on 31 of those stations. This wacky board game introduced five new characters, Colleen Collect, Gulp, Klein Westwood, Miss B, Dot Frayed Not, and Gumball, who would each introduce shows and interact with the board. This block was mainly used for shows like Newton's Apple, Bill Nye the Science Guy, and Wishbone. They also added new skits, such as All My Adults, Animal Talk, and Joke Zone. Also premiering on this date and shown a lot during the game block was Arthur. The show and books were a big part of my early life and a major one I think a lot of people associate with this channel. The next shows to come from this era were Aleph, Bet, Blast Off, Backyard Safari, Hello Mrs. Cherry Winkle, Teletubbies, Caillou, Salty's Lighthouse, The Charlie Horse Music Pizza, 
Adventures of Kangarati, and Naughty. Towards the end of this era in 1998, PBS aired a block in certain areas of the US called Someday School, which is actually a piece of lost media from the channel. The block was hosted by a mascot named Mrs. Apple, and the shows thought to have aired on the block were New New Time, Humphrey B. Bear, The Slow Norris, Okie Dokie, My World, and Wiggly Park. The last shows to come from this era starts with another show that is considered lost media, Ricky's Room, where most of the episodes still aren't found. Also premiering this year was the revival of Zoom, which originally was a show that aired from January 19, 1972 to February 10, 1978. Next was Zaboomafu, which was the next entry in the shows for the Crap Brothers, Bob the Builder, and finally, Wisharoo Park, another mostly lost show. <laughs> On January 18, 1999, PBS announced that they were starting a new 24-hour channel specifically for children's content to be called PBS Kids, which went on the air on September 6, 1999. With this new rebranding and 24-hour channel, there were certainly some changes, the most notable being the new mascots of the channel, the green PBS Kids, Dash and Dot. And does anybody else remember this guy? with a new logo including a lot of thought bubbles meant to represent imagination and creative thought. The first series to premiere on PBS Kids were Dragon Tales and Elliot Moose, both premiering on the launch date of the channel. After this came Redwall, then one of my favorite shows from this network, Between the Lions. This was followed by The Dooley and Pals Show, The Toy Castle, and Clifford the Big Red Dog. They also introduced six new shows based on children's books that were aired under the block title The Bookworm Bunch. These included Elliot Moose, George Shrinks, Corduroy, Seven Little Monsters, Timothy Goes to School, and Marvin the Tap Dancing Horse. Although it never made much sense to me that Clifford isn't included in that bunch given it came out around the same time. After this, many new shows joined the lineup like Mary Lou's Flip Flop Shop, The Saddle Club, Anne of Green Gables, Sagwa, the Chinese Siamese Cat, MythQuest, Dragonfly TV, Cyber Chase, Signing Time, Angelina Ballerina, The Shapies, Liberty's Kids, The Berenstain Bears, Thomas and Friends, Booba, Franny's Feet, Clifford's Puppy Days, Jaker's Adventures of Pigglywinks, My Bedbugs, and Curiosity Quest. PBS was interested in creating another 24-7 channel, this time aimed at older elementary school kids, similar to the game. This planned channel was eventually changed to target preschool and younger audiences, eventually called PBS Kids Sprout. On October 11th, 2004, PBS instead put out their new afternoon block known as PBS Kids Go. With this, adding new commercial segments such as What Is It? Take a Guess, Go Figure, Stop and Go, where the audience would have to go online to complete the story set up by the characters, and these little comedy skits performed by kids. During this new block, they aired shows like Arthur and Cyber Chase, and new shows like My Ann Miguel and Postcards from Buster, which premiered on the launch date of the block. Around this time as well, the channel started heavily advertising their websites, pbskids.org and pbskidsgo.org. Other shows to come out when PBS Kids Go was still on PBS Kids were Mustard Pancakes, Auto Be Good, Bob the Builder, Project Build It, Make Way for Naughty, Danger Rangers, Ribber and Robert's Wonder World, The Zula Patrol, and Shira and Lolly's Diddy Doodle Works. The official 24-7 PBS Kids channel went off the air on September 26, 2005 to be replaced by PBS Kids Sprout. However, PBS Kids Go lived on through the afternoon block on the normal PBS channel, bringing us new shows like It's a Big Big World, Fetch with Ruff Ruffman, Curious George, Seymour's Playhouse, Design Squad, Mama Mirabelle's Home Movies, Word Girl, Word World, Super Y, Animalia, Biz Kids, Betsy's Kindergarten Adventures, Rags, Martha Speaks, Sid the Science Kid, Wonderkind Little Amadeus, Lomax the Hound of Music, 
The Electric Company, 2009. Angelina Ballerina, The Next Steps, Dinosaur Train, Psy Girls, Bob the Builder, Ready, Steady, Build, Scientastic, Bali, The Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that, Wild Animal Baby Explorers, Ruby Studio, Wild Kratz, Oh Noah, and Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. On May 12, 2011, the PBS Kids video app was made publicly free to include all PBS Kids content and became the main source for viewers over the years. The channel block of PBS Kids Go came to an end on October 7, 2013, with the decrease of viewership for the after-school time slot. With the removal of PBS Kids Go and the PBS brand from Sprout later on November 12th, the channel went under a bit of a rebranding. The most notable change here starts with the redesign for the channel bumpers, now going for a much more minimalist approach, doing the same for the PBS Kids, who no longer just consist of Dash and Dot. Actually, the continuity here is that Dash grew up and is now too old so doesn't really feature in the bumpers anymore. In the bumpers at first, they had a retuning of the theme, but eventually added a new theme for the block, while maintaining the logo. With the launch of the redesign, they introduced a new show the same day, Peg Plus Cat. They followed this release with Space Racers, Odd Squad, Thomas Edison's Secret Lab, Nature Cat, Bob the Builder 2015, Bug Bites, Mac and Moxie, Ready, Jet, Go, and Splash and Bubbles. PBS Kids. Twelve years later, on January 16th, 2017, PBS Kids relaunched their 24-7 channel and showcasing a new live stream through the PBS Kids video app. This live stream would be available to areas that didn't have a local broadcasting of PBS and would also introduce a toggle feature that would allow viewers on the app to play games that would further enforce the lessons in the show they just watched. They also introduced PBS Kids Family Night on April 21st, 2017, a block in the evening that was dedicated to showing specials and movies of PBS Kids shows. With this change, the next show to premiere was The Rough Ruffman Show, Followed by Pinkalicious and Peterific, Esma and Roy, Let's Go Luna, Molly of Denali, Xavier Riddle and the Secret Museum, Clifford the Big Red Dog, Hero Elementary, Eleanor Wonders Why, Mega Wow, Don Quixote, Milo, and Alma's Way. This all brings us to the current era of the channel. For the first time in 23 years, PBS Kids was changing their logo. On June 19th, 2022, they introduced the new logo, which no longer contained Dash and changed its color scheme from green and white to blue and green. For the bumpers, they did keep Dot, D, and Dell around, while adding new mascots that were variations of random people and the PBS Kids style. They also added new commercial segments, with one called Get Moving with PBS Kids, which is a dancing segment hosted by Dot with appearances from D and Dell. The other is called the Really Really Awesome PBS Kids Activity Challenge, which shows how to do fun experiments with household objects. The newest shows on the channel that premiered after this change were Mecha Builders, Rosie's Rules, The Not Too Late Show with Elmo, Work It Out Wombats, Jamming on the Job, Lila in the Loop, and finally, Tiny Time Travel. 
In February of 2023, PBS reduced the time slot for PBS Kids on the main channel due to heavy lack of viewership in the afternoon. Now designating the slot to only early morning, however by this point most people just use the website or video app. Well those were all of the shows that have been aired on PBS Kids over the years. My top 5 shows have to be Arthur, Between the Lions, Sesame Street, Cyber Chase, and George Shrinks. Let me know in the comments what your favorite shows from the networks are. Are there any shows that I missed? Also, I just want to give a big shout out to all of these internet archivists that make documentation like this possible. I really think it is important, and I think you should go check out their channels and show your support. A lot of kids have been dramatically affected by the programs that were shown on this channel, myself included, and this was all public funded, so I just want to say, from everyone who grew up on these shows, from viewers like me, PBS Kids, thank you.